Hello, and welcome to Spicy Toast Gaming. Thank you for tuning in to another Spicy Toast video. In today's video, we're going to be covering how Annie changes at max level. This is a relatively new video format that we're trying out. Uh, we, we released one for um, Teemo the other day, and a lot of people really enjoy this format, so we're going to be continuing. The general premise of these videos is just showcasing how the champion changes when they get max level. Quite often, champions might have a very different playstyle um, at max level compared to when you're first starting out. So we want to showcase that for all the champions. So before you get a champion or before you level them up, you know what you're getting into and you know how they're generally going to be able to play. Now I will say for almost every single champion, or probably every champion, you are going to have a faster playstyle just because you're getting more powerful and you're able to close out games um, sooner. With a lot of different builds, you go from actually focusing on your deck to just focusing on the champion themselves and having them just carry and end the games for you. Annie, I think, is one of the best champions in that you can focus on just the champion at max level and use her to end the game, but you can also kind of stick with the exact same playstyle you were doing while leveling up. So if you really like that playstyle, it's still perfectly fine to keep using it, and you can keep using that to end the game no matter the difficulty. So we'll go in and break down all of that. If you guys like these videos, please like and subscribe. We're putting out daily Path of Champions content, quite often multiple videos a day. Also, if you want to support the channel a little bit more, uh, you can become a member and just hit the join button down below for more information. So first, let's cover her star powers. So the one and three star, your spells and skills deal two extra damage. So very nice, a lot of ways you can uh, build around this. Pretty simple, but opens up a lot of interesting gameplay opportunities. The two star, one of the best two stars in the game. Not as crazy as someone like LeBlanc, but just plus one starting mana, round start, create a fleeting guile in hand. So it's a one cost, slow, stun enemy. This is very, very good. It really lets you have a strong control playstyle of just always being able to control what the enemy is doing and stop their attacks before they start or really mess up any game plan they are focusing on. Generally, when you're playing Annie, what you're going to be doing is using that Guile to control the board while setting up and taking down enemy threats. There's a lot of different ways um, you can play Annie, and she has a lot of variability in her playstyle, but it all still works together pretty well. So one important aspect, Mana Soul Student. This, it sits on your board, and then every round, the first time you play a fast, slow spell, one of those, or a skill, they play Magic Embers. Magic Embers normally just deals one to the enemy Nexus, but because of your star powers, this is going to be dealing three, and then if you have Annie on the board with a Ludens, this will be increased by one more um, per Ludens you have um, on Annie. So, really strong, gives you a good defensive play style. You can just play a couple of these on the board, and then just use that fleeting guile you're making every round to trigger this and deal a nice chunk to the enemy um, nexus. So if you want to play a slower playstyle, that also works. The prefect works with that as well. So again, when you play a fast or slow spell or a skill, grant me one power. So another unit you can just have sitting on your board, stacking up, and use them to end the game. So kind of another win condition for you. Um, captive Greyback, so you have a Shadow Totem, and then Attack Deal 3. Again, this is going to be increased by at least 2, potentially more, um, damage to the blocker. And then if it's dead or gone, deal that to the Nexus. So, again, a very strong card that's scaling with Annie's star powers. And then you also have really good removal and control with Death's Hand, dealing damage to the enemy and the enemy Nexus. And then Spell Slinger. So you can use this to either stun an enemy, or if they're already stunned, you can deal two damage to it instead. Again, that damage is increased because of your star power, so it's going to be at least four, but potentially five or more. So you can use this to stun more units, focusing on that control aspect, 
and also kill units where you can stun them with the guile you're making every round, and then use this unit to finish them off. Again, giving you more control. And then one amazing thing, Disintegrate. So this is Annie's champion spell, so if you have Annie on the board, all other copies will turn into Disintegrate. So you pick a unit, the next time it takes at least one damage or more, kill it. This gives you absolutely amazing removal. The enemy can play a massive unit with crazy amounts of stats. You throw this on them and then just do one damage with anything and they're dead. So for example, you could play House Spider. You have this little spiderling, just a 1-1. One, one. If you attack and they try to block this unit, as long as you're dealing one damage to them and you have Disintegrate, that unit's going to die. So this gives you absolutely crazy power and control. And you really can focus on many different ways to win um, with Annie. So normally, the way you're playing her while leveling up, and the way they can keep working, is using these relics on the side. So Ludens gives you one more damage to all your spells and skills. Essentially the same thing your star power is, but one more. Annie has to be on the board for that to activate though. Also Archangel Staff. So every round that Annie's on the board, she refills your spell mana at the start of the round, which is essentially going to be the entire game because Annie should always be on your board. So again, really strong just having Annie on the board at the start of the game. She's one cost, so she can always be on there. And then the Grand General's Counterplan. What this does, if Annie is on the board, you create a fleeting copy of her in hand. That fleeting copy is then going to be um, turned into a disintegrate. So if Annie does die, uh, you can just um, play that fleeting copy of Annie, or you always have a disintegrate in your hand you can use uh, if you want. So this is kind of the general or normal way you can play with Annie, and it really feels the exact same as how you're leveling up, just better essentially. So if you like Annie while you're leveling, you can stick with that same play style have that same play style, but better. So really nice that Annie doesn't have to completely change uh, when you get her maxed out, like someone like Teemo or Jax or Diana, where you're pretty much only playing the champion and you're trying to end the game in like the first round or two. Annie doesn't have to do that, but Annie can do that if you want. So this is going to be more dependent on relics, but most of the builds are for just winning very quickly. You throw Gale Force, and then you either go, go, if you want, Guardian's Orb. So every time you're summoning Annie, you are buffing up all of your deck with random epic cards, or the one for really bursting down the enemy is you go with two Chase Guns. Did I go past it? Uh, no care, it was right next to Gale Force. So these chase guns, what they do is when you summon Annie, they create two warning shots. Now these normally deal one to the enemy nexus, but again, because of Annie, the damage is going up. You could either have two warning shots or go with a warning shot and a Ludens to further increase the damage. And if you go with this build every round when you play Annie, you're dealing a massive amount of damage to the enemy nexus because you're playing all these warning shots and just going straight for their face, their nexus, and dealing that damage, and you're not focusing on your other units as much. So Annie has a very good ability when she's at her max level to play essentially the same way she's been playing the entire time while leveling up, just better, which is really nice that if you like that play style, you don't have to get rid of it. But if you wanna go hyper aggressive, just focus on tons of copies of Annie, and you're just using her to um, summon her every single round, use these chase guns to just deal damage straight to the enemy nexus and try to end the game very quickly, that is something you can do. I will say Annie is one of my favorite champions um, in the game. If you want to see a play style of um, Annie just completely clearing an adventure with a similar build to this, uh, I recently did a speed run of the weekly adventure where I cleared it in under six minutes and 30 seconds, which is pretty crazy. So you can do some pretty awesome things with her. 
definitely comment down below what you think of Annie and if you like how she has a pretty balanced playstyle of being able to play similar to how you're leveling and then also can go hyper aggressive if you want. Uh, if you like the video, definitely like and subscribe and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you so much for watching that whole video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe, maybe hit that notification bell. We're putting out daily videos for Path of Champions, sometimes multiple videos every single day. And if you want to support the channel, hit that join button down below for more information. That's going to keep me here doing what I love, which is putting out content for all of you. I hope you all have a great day.